r slash off my chest. Fine Friday says. I hate 6, but my husband loves it. I hate 6, I've hated it for a long time. My husband and I have been together 6 years. We have 3 young kids, he wants more, I don't. Sex hurts so much a majority of the time and I just can't find any pleasure in it. He always wants it, and I feel terrible. Right now he's gone for work for a long time, and I'm so relieved. I don't have to have sex. I just can't keep up with him. He wants sex every day, to the point where he convinced me it would be a great idea to have sex before I was cleared after having a baby. It hurt even more than usual, and it makes me hate it even more. I don't understand how anyone deprives pleasure from this, it's not comfortable. OK Cherry 4655 says. Something doesn't sound right here, has it always been this way? Fine Friday says. Since we had our first child 5 years ago. It didn't at first. OK Cherry 4655 says. Have you talked to your doctor about it? Daralumanfring says. OK, I have a few questions here. How old is your husband? I've read through some of your posts, and you are about to have your fourth child in six years, and you are only 22, something seems very concerning about this entire situation. Why does your husband not care about your comfort in sex? Why does he not care about your health in sex and all these pregnancies, that are too close together? Why did you get married, and had kids, when you were almost a minor? I ask you all of their questions because, from what one can gather from your posts, you are a victim of severe abuse, please reach out to people, who can help you. None of this is okay. I wish all the best to you and your children. R slash off my chest. Factual Cola 666 says. Boyfriend jerked off to dodge a cat, after seeing her in concert. I usually don't care about masturbating and watching porn here and there, but my BF has a problem and this really offended me. For the last months we've been having issues with sex has not interested can't finish won't initiate anything. Confessed he had a porn problem, this really got me mad, because in the beginning of our relationship he went out of his way, to tell me he think watching porn in a relationship is wrong, and he would never do that. The lack of honesty and communication is heartbreaking. I've been really horny and haven't masturbated out of respect to him, and the boundary he placed with porn. Then we get free tickets to Coachella, I was the one excited to see Dodger Cat he kept saying. How vulgar the music is, and how he doesn't like it. We come home, and I'm all over him, and he's not doing anything to me. I was so horny I gave him head twice that day just to receive nothing, and then the next day, when I leave to work he jerks off to, frick, I'm dodge a cat. I'm honestly so disgusted. So grossed out he was getting, turned on during the show, and not because of me dancing on him. So gross he waited for me to leave instead of doing stuff with me. If he was horny, and I wasn't in the mood he'd get it. I'm so unsatisfied sexually every guy I've been with can't keep his hands off of me except my bf. So. Puglif92 says. At first I thought this was funny. But as I read on. You should talk to him, see where that goes, or dump his sorry ass. Jasigarol1515 says. My friend went through this with her so. It honestly broke her trying to continuously get him interested with sex. She tried 4 years. It's a him problem. You cannot make him change. Only he can change and break his porn habits with therapy, but most men won't. You can try and have a conversation with him about it and tell him he needs to change, but it will probably only get better for a couple months and go back to this. Ranger Big 6857 says. That's literally so disgusting. I'm sorry you cannot change him I need to leave. He's fantasizing about, frick, I other women, and wishing he could be with them instead of you. Please please find the strength to leave. Badass McJeepMbubbis says. 
that sucks. Gotta have a conversation about seeing if he can stop watching porn for like a month and see if he can and how that affects your sex life. TBH also gotta see how he plans to make up for the Dodger cat thing too. Imo the person at fault gotta be the one to lead the conversation for fixing the issue. Good luck. R slash off my chest. Topo Charlo says. My girlfriend has become insufferable. We met 13 years ago and she was something out of a dream. Beautiful, intelligent, funny, but she was not loyal at all. We parted ways and found ourselves back in each other's lives and made it official about 4 years ago. In our time apart she got into therapy and learned to chill out her extracurricular activities, I learned to trust her again and boom, it worked. But now, as a 38 year old woman, is obsessed with mental health TikTok, and holy shit it's completely turned her into the type of person that I absolutely cannot stand. Everything, and I do mean everything, is someone else's fault now. If we have a disagreement, I'm gaslighting her. If I have to work late, I'm abusing her with neglect and furthering her abandonment issues. If she has a headache, she's having seizures. And every time I point out the logic in something, it's turned into that I don't respect slash believe women, that I'm a narcissist because I think I know everything. Always accused of being one of them instead of being the progressive that I claim to be. Honestly, I hate coming home, I dread her phone calls, and I've isolated myself to just her because everything else, family, friends, hobbies, work, is just a distraction to what we are trying to build. I'm starting to lose my mind, because I do love her so much, but I also can't stand to be around her, she brings absolutely no joy. I know that sounds harsh, but it is a universal truth with her right now. I'm trying to be as supportive and patient as I possibly can, but at what point am I just divulging into someone's delusion at my expense? I know everyone is going to say you got to break it off, or you just need to sit and talk with her. Talks of breakup turns into a suicide threat, and a sit down talk turns into a massive fight. I'm losing my mind over here. Intelligent Fact 3539 says. You have now reached the point that you're divulging into someone's delusion at your own expense. Breaking up is not a negotiation, it's a unilateral decision. Suicide threats get a calm call to emergency services and her friends slash family. Help should not be coming from TikTok or you. Backslash edited for clarity. Imza here says. This opus. Do not ever allow anybody to threaten you with suicide or self-harm. If you don't do something that they want, or do something they don't want. You immediately call their respective authorities and remove yourself from the situation. I personally lose respect instantly when somebody tries to emotional manipulate with suicide. Degnes says. Call out the hypocrisy of calling you manipulative through gaslighting, when she's manipulating you by three thinning suicide, and then leave her. Goatee1979 says. You need to end your relationship. You will need to do this for your own mental health. Yes, it will sting, but you will be better off in the long run. Passine Toil says. Went through something similar to this with an 8 year relationship, and it came to a head 3 years ago. The last 18 months were an absolute nightmare. It pushed me to physical exhaustion. It had to end and start my recovery from the situation. It was hard, but an absolute relief and absolutely necessary. I learned that you cannot help these people. They can only help themselves, and if they are refusing their treatment or the reality of their situation it is a very tough road indeed. Someone said to me once, don't expect any of this to make sense, and he was right. None of it did. Our whole lives turned to dust because of some invisible almost evil that took over us for absolutely no reason at all. My ex got in touch with me a year ago, two years after the breakup, and apologized for her behavior. She said she was embarrassed. Maybe she needed the breakup to shock her into reality about how she was burning everything to the ground. 
Whatever, I can't worry about that, only my life, and having the right people in it. The breakup was traumatic, and I look back on my state of mind, and what I was reduced to with almost awe and amazement. Our relationship was over, and the person I knew was gone. R slash off my chest. Over peak 823 says. Imma mother host just had an abortion. Imma new mom. Our first year was a tough one. Our baby kept us on autos, wouldn't latch, wouldn't sleep, cold and be put down and was colicky. My initiation into motherhood was demanding and exhausting, but I wouldn't change a thing. My baby is everything I cold have ever dreamed of and more despite all the challenges. My marriage took a toll too, when you have a demanding baby who won't sleep or allow you to put them down, that doesn't exactly leave a lot of room for date nights. We became roommates, both in survival mode between work, baby and meeting our basic needs. Then one day, things were just better. My baby was older, stronger, more independent. My baby started sleeping better, sleeping longer. I finally had time to look in the mirror again and recognize there was an actual person there that wasn't just a tired shell of myself anymore. I no longer felt like a new mom, I felt like me and a mom. And my husband felt like my husband again. And I guess we enjoyed that day. Little too much. I got pregnant. Just as things were starting to get easier. We've always wanted more than one, but definitely never in a million years would I have chosen this timing. I didn't know what to do, I was scared, lost. Picturing going through everything we just went through all over again like deja vu. Convince myself it was for the best, that we could do it, that we'd figure it out. Tried to bury my fears and my doubts, told myself it was the responsible and admirable thing to push through. Yeah a mom now, take accountability for this, and deal with it. The future isn't guaranteed, maybe it's better to accept the now. My husband felt the same way, but wasn't as optimistic at pushing through. My husband was scared. He was finally happy, finally settled into a nice balance between home and work. He wanted to keep things the way they were for now, until we were ready. He became a different person. I'd never seen him so withdrawn. He was trying to stay open and supportive but I could. See it, that it was breaking him to think about going through this all again so soon, and with a toddler. A toddler we haven't had the chance to parent yet. A toddler who will be new to us too. He never pushed me to abort, he didn't have to. I could see it was what he wanted, but he didn't think it was his place to influence me. So instead, he was honest with how he felt, that he didn't know if he could do this. What if this baby comes with a whole new set of challenges? Would he resent it? He wasn't confident. He wasn't ready to find out. And so the decision was up to me. I can't explain how heavy the burden is to make a choice like this. To know nobody can make it for you. I wanted to run away, to crawl under a rock and die until this somehow resolved itself. The guilt of choosing to abort is the most painful experience I've ever lived through. But guilt implies wrongdoing and I don't feel like I've done something. Wrong as much as I have just done something hard. And sad. And painful. I didn't do it for my husband or in spite of him. I did it because I think when you bring a baby into this world with a partner, you should both be ready and willing. If I chose to have it, it would have been out of obligation. I would have loved the baby ultimately, but I wanted to be ready for them, I wanted to be excited for them. Like we were the first time. The reason why our first year was so hard yet so rewarding, was because despite the challenges it was worth it, because we wanted them, we chose them, and were ready for them. Would we have come around to those feelings? I'd like to think so. Would we have figured it out? Probably. But I wasn't willing to risk the alternative, not for the sake of my moral imperative, and not at the expense of the family I have right now. I'm not sure how many people have been in this position, but any kind words. Newpenny answers Kediat says. 
this guilt shall and will fade away. It's okay to choose your family and kudos to giving love to one baby than two at this moment as it gets enough attention growing. However, contraceptives should be in place to avoid self traumas, but wishing you only the best lady. Riyadh something says. I did. My second pregnancy was high risk, and boy, he was a handful, we actually only wanted one child. So he was a surprise. I absolutely did not want a third child, my dad babbles it for me, and my husband, when we terminated it. I never felt bad. I wasn't traumatized. I was relieved, it was a clump of cells. A possibility, that I didn't care to entertain. That was in the 90s. My heart breaks for you, and all the women now, that are bathed in the bullshit political rhetoric, that tells us, that we must feel bad, no we don't, it's okay for you to make the right choice for yourself, your marriage, and your baby, it's okay if you do have regrets, but you don't have to it's going to be okay. It sounds like you did the right thing. You hold on to that. Duck Wedding says. You did what you knew in your heart was best for your family. I had a medically necessary termination a little over a year ago. The heartache gets better with time. It will get better, focus on healing, and on the baby you have right now. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.